Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi. Hi. So for all of you new here, This is This and That. We are going to discuss everything from the All Japan Figure Skating Championships and French Nationals. So for all of you, smash that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and leave all of your comments below, which we know you will anyway, <laughs> because you're going to have a lot of thoughts. So Jonathan, it's yes. beginning to feel a lot like Christmas, right? And we accidentally coordinated that with your red and my green. So that's accidentally. A nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been getting some gifts from our viewers and mm -hmm. from ourselves. This is being recorded on a new MacBook Pro, which was an unintentional Christmas present to myself because um, I was taking in everything. I went to my mom's last week. I forget <laughs> what I was, oh, cause I was uploading our this and that and trying to get it up in time last week. So I had it there. I was carrying everything in and for, I don't know what happened, but like I turned to do the key and did something and my MacBook hit at just a certain angle that then the screen wasn't turning on. So then oh, I no. go, and I was like, oh, man, I have a busy schedule. We're in the middle of all of the Russia thing, right? Right. So I go to the store and they go, you also have a battery recall and it's going to take a week. And I was like, I, can't you literally just put the cord back in? Do we right. really need a new battery? Like if it survived this long, and right. I was like. And I was literally like there and like, this is like, remember when I, my phone, remember when it got caught in the rain and I right. almost wanted to buy a new phone. Cause I was like, I can't be without a phone for two days. Well, I was like, I cannot be without a computer during J Japanese nationals and Russian nationals. So for all of you who leave rude comments about why we don't film on two different cameras and then splice it together, even though <laughs> the files would be so big that it would take like a week to get you the footage and all of you rude people who make comments just to try to slide us down because you know maybe we didn't like your favorite skater this is exactly a new <laughs> macbook pro we are giving you the latest technology okay it's so exciting dave so exciting but do you so do you have the usb port in yours like can you still plug in the microphone and stuff oh i had to buy an extra usb port because this is like the fancier usb you know apple is always trying to right make, with the so, little cord yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyway but I have to make sure because I was having an issue when I do my microphone, funny thing like that, when I plug in the earbuds, it gets a static sound. But when I don't use the earbuds, it's just fine. So what in the hell is going on there? I am not sure. <laughs> but I am not using the microphone for today, which I didn't do on my other videos. And you know, people are going to be like, yeah, that sound is awful. Just so Got you it. know, <laughs> I haven't used it on the last couple and we didn't have complaints on that. But anyway... Um, the comments are just flooding, you know, people, yeah, they exactly. have thoughts, but it's okay. beginning to look a lot like Christmas because we have gotten some good Christmas presents. So my friend Eureka Honda goes to Japan. She's also from Canada. She's giving us, apparently Tessa and Scott had a brief romance before the Olympics. She wanted us to know she's hearing okay. all the good dirt, but she said the Russian dirt is so much better. So okay. last year she gave me a book on Shoma Uno when she went home to Japan. Right. This year, she sent the Hanyu magazine, and there are like calendars. She tabbed it like a good skating fan. Yeah, I was gonna say who's who's marked that. <laughs> okay, not me. I can't okay. read Japanese. She knows it. Okay. Oh my God, we've got a calendar for the Christmas season. <laughs> Fabulous, right? A Hanyu advent calendar. <laughs> Listen, you need some part Canadian part Japanese people that can translate Shoma Udo's video game videos and give right. you wonderful The Hanyu magazine, yeah, All exciting. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we have Amy Russell. Amy Russell. Oh, she sent she... me something. And I, she told me you were, she was getting you this book. I used to own this book when I was little. Jonathan. The passion to skate. <laughs> it's about the passion to skate. It's the passion to skate, as Sandra would say. Also, I got a mug. And it says, warning, may spontaneously start talking about figure skating. <laughs> Two snaps up for Amy Russell, okay? <laughs> Loved there, it. <laughs> there was also a VHS tape in there that I'll have to get converted, but yes, okay? Okay. okay. And, Exciting stuff. And then a, another surprise gift yesterday. I mean, really. So When it rains, it pours, yeah. Grant Naroyan, one of the figure skating fans, is at the rink. 
And I knew he was there and I forgot because Law had coached with him and I've been going to the rink and he brought in gifts. And I was like, okay. And he really knows what I like because hello, I mean, this needs to be on my wall. Tilt it forward, tilt it forward. There you go, there, it was glaring. Now that's perfect. First of all, look how skinny Sergey is there. And you know what? Looking good in gold sequins. <laughs> you know I love a sequin. I mean, <laughs> going he, for gold. He's got great he eyebrows. He's looking hot. And one on Brian Orser. Okay? Let me just... Oh, I dare you to mail it to a Terry. <laughs> no, and it's autographed. Anyway. Oh, oh my God. nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm not sure. They look like old album covers or something. I know. But Jonathan, I'm very nervous to talk about this week because Han Yu lost nationals. Jackie Wong said that he hung on to a triple axel, which was rather correct. And the Fan Yu were giving him death threats. And you know what, Jonathan? I think that we need to have a kumbaya here, okay? (laughs) He's getting older. You can't be perfect all the time. All the time. He literally just did a very... Excellent skate, albeit a second place finish at Grand Prix final. And we'll talk about this with Kevin also and it's Rika. Like, and uh, I mean, although the Rika loss was... really has me so nervous, Jonathan. That lavender is that some spray. Old, is that some old expired Puritan's pride, you guys? Yes. All right. It is calm. It is giving me calm here for the Han Yu loss. I am very nervous about the Han Yu. They were giving death threats. We were okay. Before Interpol. we get into the nitty gritty, because you're going to know about the nitty gritty about these Han Yus more than anyone else, I feel. <clears throat> It was interesting when we were in Vegas for Skate America yeah. and my friend Vanessa and I went to the the Liberace Museum, as one does. But we were talking- I wasn't invited. Well, this was before you got there. We, we almost went early exclusively to do it. And that's when I got the flu. So it was like really an emotional experience. But we were talking to them about the fans of Liberace. Mm. And the guy who runs the museum was the one leading the tour. And he was like, the fans are the biggest detriment to the entire foundation because so many fans, it's about them, not even about the art form they're following or the actual person. And it was just the minute he would like, like just expand on what would happen with one particular crazed fan. I was like, this is skating where you think Han Yu cares about all this stuff? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he likes to line his pockets and he likes the adulation, but. Of course he does, but like, this is some do of these Do you think he even touches, ridiculous. do you think his hand ever even touches half of those Pooh Bears? Right, exactly. It's just, it's for them. It's for them. I mean, maybe, and to make him feel like a king when he sees them raining down, but it's for, they're do, you're doing it for yourself. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the sport. It has nothing to do with his integrity, like all of this stuff. Because I was even watching your video when you were talking about how they were going after the ISQ about certain things. And it was and just... Interpol. Don't yeah, forget Interpol. Interpol. Amazing. I'm sure they'll get right on it. It's a super priority. I was watching Don't F with Cats and they were calling Interpol on there. And he was looking up, Luca Magnato was looking up his own mugshot. And then I thought, I wonder if... The ISU is there for Han Yu. Is he one of the most wanted? Like, <laughs> should it's on, uh, yeah, their picture's on the wall somewhere. They're Ridic- now mad at the Japanese Skating Federation for underscoring him. Also, allegedly, they kind of forced him to go because he hasn't been to nationals in a while. So, and he made that joke about maybe he would get sick. So he definitely had to go. So, yeah. I mean, he could have, I mean, I could have seen him withdrawing from exhaustion after the short or something like that. That would have been an okay thing to do. And, you know, well, all things considered, this wasn't like, like a total combustion. This was a great athlete who seemed too hired, or too tired to hold certain landings. I mean, right? Look, I was surprised because he was it. up okay. He seemed tired on the way down. I was too tired to do the next edition of the Tarasova video because after one of them, after well, the that's f- emotionally draining too. <laughs> we well, you know what happened is that I have to go to work the next day, and on one of them, I couldn't stop laughing for like two hours after I edited and posted the video and then the comments were coming in. And then I was like so exhausted the next, it just like, th- and the week was busy and a lot going on through the whole week out of whack. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> Tarasova for me forever. She is not just for Alexei Krasnojan. She is for Ilya Alberbuk. She is for Jonathan Bayer. And she is for... <laughs> 
Okay, you, you know, here's the thing. When you, cause you were asking me, am I team Tarasova or am I team Atiri or am I team Plashenko or am I team yes, um, let's hear your whoever, Kulik, all of these people. I'm team Moskvina. Cause she literally and figuratively is just going under the radar. <laughs> cause she's short, but she's also just like, y'all are nuts. I'm out, I'm out. You don't even deserve to come to Russia Nationals after a comment like that, okay? <laughs> you can stay in Japan with the fond you forever, okay? <laughs> you don't deserve to come, all right? You have to stay No, there. I'm still that sucker that's a Marin Fonda. Can we say that? Can you be a Marin Fonda? That would make sense. My daughter needs fans because it is. Because it's hard to, it's hard to love sometimes. Yeah. Yes, but it's okay. You can stay in Japan. We're not inviting you to Russian nationals. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, now Ted is coming. That shows you a Terry's power. The fact that Ari Zakarian is tied to Plashenko and she is able to get another commentator more favorable to her for the English speaking right. public. You know right. she is all behind because Ted is her biggest ass kisser. You know that is Team Terry power right there. You can't blame her for being a strategist. Like, I mean, Manager or coach, she is managing. Very As if Tatiana well. Flod and Ari Zakarian were it. So when we have to hear, listen to Ted at Russian Nationals this year, instead of Ari and Tatiana giving us the information and the shade, and Ted Ooh. tells us about every three turn in the footwork sequence. Right. Blame it, Terry. All <laughs> I'm saying, or thank her if you're one of those Canadians. Depending, thinks, yeah. He's so sweet. I love him. Great. Because you know, you know the, all those girls are so sensitive. They're like the toughest girls well, um, in the world. Your coaster Naya is crying constantly, so she is yeah. that sensitive. I know, but that's because I always like the sensitive one. But I'm telling you, those other ones can handle some criticism. Did you see them dancing this week? No, I didn't see that. Who posted it? There was this video of them. Well, who knows where they originate? They get spread so quickly. It's like right. um, it's like the flu. It just goes everywhere. <laughs> um, and it, I, but, but it's that Alexei Zelish knockoff who choreographs it and i have to say after seeing that video what the hell is the purpose it's not modern dance it's it's not even mu good musical theater choreography we're like learning walk like a, an egyptian and i have to say i agree with plashenko who are you i need a microscope to see you these girls should be in ballet and maybe a good lyrical class what the hell is going on there that is not dance that is not theater that well, and how does that help anything then if it's like silly like that, you know? But we did not see Terzin Baeva. She's been in the Averbuk show only doing a triple sow. I don't think she's competing this season. And Kanisheva is finally saying that she's going to be healed, but she's been out of the rink for quite some time. So interesting notes on there. They all looked exactly the same. Hmm. Right. Funny. The fans get funny that the yeah. fans get very upset about a bunch of girls that have like this much difference between them. Right. It's... Right. Now Evan Perelstein will be like, no, I think Coach Knight is very different. Okay. Yes. Well, she's a little different, but the rest, especially in the juniors, it was like, wait, yo, yo, it's like a dime a dozen here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, Jonathan. Let's where to be? Let's start. Shoma Uno had to pretend not to even be that excited when he pulled off such a win, and think about it. Lambiel took away the video games. He's gotten him back to mental health. Jenny was talking about this because we did a thing on See Alive. And she was saying that this is classic when you stop avoiding the thing that is making you stressed out and you face it head on. It reduces the anxiety. You start to feel better. His whole mood has improved. And for the people, from reports from Chambly, uh, as soon as his mood improved, all the jumps came back. And you could see well, yeah and shape. i would think potentially for him some structure i think when everything is so like kind of gray area you could do this you might not do that to have someone help regiment you all of a sudden he appeared trained again he appeared yes. focused again like he knew what he was doing he'd been doing it um and i think it would be very hard to kind of self-motivate that kind of intense schedule because it's a little beyond human you, you know what i mean it's not a natural schedule to keep so i think to have someone doing it with you we saw what happened when michelle did it she didn't just lose to irena she lost to sarah hughes okay i just mean rough. yeah okay Be i mean it's a monumental task it's why you need a team to help you you know it was so good to see the short program especially because like the landings weren't eked out you know like some of the ones in the free these were completely solid 
You are, I, it was you so are a good. shady queen, all right? He what? looked so much better than ever from the fact ever. that- In the short program, especially though, it, like each each element in the short program, I was so like, I geez, like, look at I like the costume, but do you think- uh, Which, sh- for both, you mean? Do you think that the short should have been black and that- bluish color you know what the the red reminds me of jan hoffman yeah there's like a 1970s east german quality going on so because it's so different and it's almost throwback i'm kind of here for it i wonder if alexa kinirum thinks that they clash like when their blues clashed with one another remember she had a lot of thoughts on that (laughs) she did (laughs) i thought it was almost clashing perhaps does alexa Mm. think it clashed i wonder yeah i was getting that you mean the blue and the free no, the blue with the maroon. It was a strange color combination. You mean, yeah, yeah. But wasn't it monochromatic? We could ask Ludwig, but he would spend 20 minutes telling us, like when he told us why he decided to move to Harlem. So it would really, Oh, okay. You know... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Poor child, okay. Yeah, I don't think Carolina Herrera has done any um, skating outfits. He should. This is what you your contribution could be. Okay, I can change the sport forever, okay? <laughs> yes, okay, Carolina Herrera. Who needs a good co- Rika Kahira needs a good costume from Carolina Herrera. She could help her. She'd look okay. good in one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is what you could do, Jonathan. Think about how you can help the sport. We can okay. connect the Venn diagram of our lives. Remember when Rosie O'Donnell okay. didn't like the suits of Il Devo and she called Saks Fifth Avenue and they gave them Armani suits? This could be your contribution. Okay. I could be the Rosie O'Donnell of skating. Yes. Dreams do come true. Okay. Listen, okay. You were fat once. It's all good. Okay. I mean, it's... I mean, I was thick, Dave. <laughs> With how many C's? Okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. Um, but truly, I loved, you know, we gave, or I gave such sass to Lambiel when he was sitting with Shoma the last time. But this time to see him, uh, it was cute when they were watching the replay together from the free skate mm-hmm. and Lambiel physically as they would watch the replay and i love that japanese nationals does this so we watch the skater watch their own replay sometimes tough some people couldn't watch uh, i think yeah kauri like was getting more upset by watching um but it was interesting to see lambiel throwing shoma's shoulder back as he needed to in the replay <laughs> it was kind of a, it, it's interesting insight like that for me to see what their thought process oh is. is it because remember when we did one of the judging videos you didn't like tracy wilson having the skaters watch their video on the screen remember no that's different because that's for press coverage that's her watching and saying how do you feel yeah but i think that that is the best kind of press coverage because otherwise we just get a Meryl davis Charlie and I were really happy with the way we skated today. We really were appreciative. That's because she had to put together a comment on it. If she was just watching her yeah, own replay. But when you not- watch your own replay, you can explain. It's more real. It's more informative, more substantive, Jonathan. It gets a more natural reaction. See, and I feel I just see everyone go to a dark place. <laughs> it's the same thing as you watching the kiss and cry. But they're not having to come up with a statement. Jonathan, are you an overthinker? No, I'm like, because I've been in these situations, like if you watch me processing something, that's one thing, but if you watch me process something and I have to come up with a statement about it, that's something else entirely. Well, if she asks a good question, like what happened with your knee here? You know, come on. It's I don't like, know, I wish I didn't, I wish I landed it. Come on, Tracy. remember I when Nancy, remember Nancy told us on her short program combination, I felt a little slow going in, so make sure you bend. Well, when I feel <laughs> slow going into my jumps, I'm like, make sure you bend. And look, come on, we learn <laughs> from Nancy up. Kerrigan, we learn from Brian Boitano, we could it's even true. learn from Lambiel about his shoulder. I mean, right. we've got a lot going on. So it's the shoulder, it's the hip. I was I was surprised, like, I'll be interested to see if Lambiel can spruce up Shoma's spins even more. Uh, the, another one, like a couple of lost opportunities in his spins here. Yeah, I, <clears throat> but I would think um, that they could even go further with him. Well, I thought it was a good performance, okay? Think was, about it, where we were two months ago. Think about where we were three months ago. Crazy, just crazy. He looked and very, especially in the short. The short was especially quite a moment. He looked svelte. You you are so mm-hmm. on that short. But I thought the, the free, the program that beat Han Yu was just stellar. And it was his... You know what I realized when he was skating and not falling for once? I was like, you know, he is a prettier skater than Han Yu. He has prettier just it's crossovers. Broader. Yeah, it's just like grander skating. He finishes the crossover with the, the toe pointed, right? Yeah. And he... 
he finishes through the extension of his body, and it's why he looks so tall. And if, remember, Han Yu has beautiful knees and very good skating skills. I'm not shading him, but he looks down. He doesn't have the carriage that Shoma Uno has, and that's really- Carriage is the exact right word, because that that width in here and that sternum, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really open skating. Now, Han Yu has much more complicated transitions and all these sorts of things, but even though Shoma's is a bit more open, a bit less, I don't want to say cluttered because Hanyu's isn't cluttered, but it, oh, it's, it's a little uh, cluttered at times. A little, but with complicated intricacies versus some other people that are just mucking it up. Um, but what he does... Shoma has it, nicer programs than Hanyu. Let's be real so about it. It's so intentional, each move. And so it's so much more can, powerful to me. He can also vary um, the speed and the strength and um, the tempo of his crossovers based on the music. Mm-hmm. And that's... <laughs> You know, Hanyu has this music that's just kind of like he skates through it. And it's just, just like the audience, you know, he kind of makes us appreciate him, but he's not really skating to the audience. And everyone is just like wrapping it up. You know, Shoma's skating more to the audience than Hanyu is. Right. You know, Hanyu's a little bit more like Johnny Weir, where we appreciate him as he's giving us. But it's like he wants you to know that he is a great artist and we are lucky to have him here. You know, Shoma's yes. skating more to the audience. It's more of a... Right. He gives content. you that energy. It like yeah. it bursts out of him in a different kind of projective sort yeah. of way, which can be very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, and it did feel like someone re- like he remembered who he was. Yes, and look how happy he looked. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. This is good. Yeah. It was it was really thrilling. And you want you want to talk about intentional choreography, for instance, because we know we have to deal with Trusova's um, cantilever all the time. Watch uh, Shoma's cantilever in the short program. It comes oh, the exactly short. with the music, and it's like... Oh. On, in the free, he does that arm move on the beat. I mean, come yeah. on, Jonathan. You and this short yeah. program, okay? I do love this short program. And you know what else I loved about this short program? When he did the spread eagle out of the um, triple axle, it was so like a beautifully landed jump, and I will now turn and deliberately go into the spread eagle move. Whereas sometimes other people, it's kind of an easy way to fall out of the you know, the ride out. I, so, there you go. Oh, I just got a text from Jim Peterson. What happened to Japanese nationals? He must be very nervous about Hanyu's performance. He must be in shock. Okay, yes. I mean, the guy's tired. He's fine. You know what I mean? Like, to me, I don't know. This wasn't such a controversy. This was a very well, understandable, tired, amazing athlete who I will just, peak again when it's more important. I mean, you don't want to lose your nationals, okay? He now lost two events in a row. He's lost to Nathan and Shoma. The Fanyu, can you smell the fear on them? I can. can yeah. You not, this is why they're reacting that way. Right. They know, they know that it's their worldview is starting to upend, right? Like, they've right. been very comfortable, and now they're... It's a fear-based thing, Jonathan. Yeah. And a lot of emotion. Well, all anger, either fear or, you know... Or sadness, sadness. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're very scared and maybe very sad also. Yeah, it's it's both. So we did see Brian and Jislan back though. We did, and it seemed very choreographed. Brian got the first hug. He was mm-hmm. letting it us know. Too much uncomfortable laughter and the kiss and cry after the short program. <laughs> it's an awkward it's an awkward dynamic. But they looked cl- Oh, okay, ready? I'm gonna have them all come after me this time. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Here we go. I always get blamed anyway. I know. Tag so Jonathan Byer, eighty plus. Okay. Oh, um, the Japanese nationals always has those fun um, icons or graphics, whatever they're using. You know, with I the hate height that thing. sound before the sound. By the way. Yeah. So this one had the layout. Mm-hmm. So they would throw the arena up there, and then they would map out mm-hmm. the directions. Which is what Joe Inman does when he watches. Remember he told us Right, that? Yeah. yeah. It just looks like weird, cluttery, like, modern art. Um, it was interesting to see where people were putting certain jumps and who did what. A couple of skaters, Hanyu included, um, particularly, I think, in the short program. Yes. Mm-hmm. It kind of exposed that they weren't taking up that much ice. Mm -hmm. He wasn't using all the corners of the ice surface. He certainly wasn't. And and it was just interesting to see it this way because I've not analyzed from that kind of view. It's something you can kind of feel more in person, but even then you're more aware of when they're in your area. Um, But it was fascinating. Shoma really utilized that entire space and Hanyu kind of clustered a bit more. Jonathan. 
which ice covered. The Fanyu and Doug Ha, on behalf of Brian Orser, are not going to like that comment. They are going to say that Hanyu is a gift to the ice. He is giving, <laughs> you know, the the seventy percent of the ice That's surface nice. that he is using. He is giving so much more than Shoma is giving per percentage of the ice. He's giving so much more per square meter that you know that ice is is the appropriate That's ice nice. to be used. Okay. And great. That's lovely. And I totally hear you, all those people that say that. It was just an interesting graphic because, and you could tell some skaters like weren't, like as they saw it come up, they were like, wait, what graphic is this? And then I wondered if a couple of them were like, can you take that down, please? This is, thanks, Japan. Japan is always giving the most. They are just. Yeah. They're always on it. And you know what? That's a that's a community that does love their sport. I would like their... How come we don't get their lighting at every competition? How come Japan is lit like like it's a cathedral? I feel like we are Especially, in St. Patrick's... It's can, Christmas yeah, comparing morning mass. It to French nationals, because French nationals was so dingy and sad. And this one was such like a bright, beautiful... Speaking you know, of French like nationals, a, John Zimmerman came and like didn't even brush his hair. Like you could tell he's had a hard week. I mean, come yeah, on. I mean... A little conditioner is something. <laughs> I don't know. It was a weird look. And did you notice that the French loved to cheat so much that they were now giving Kevin Amos total scores that were up there with uh, Han Yu and Nathan Chen? The thing that's Shobu. funny about Kevin is that he gets it, though. Like, at first he was really excited, and then you'd know he's like, oh, right, Nationals. I remember last year at Nationals, he turned to Sylvia and was like, but who cares? It's Nationals, so they're fake numbers. Or, you know, <laughs> they were completely inflated. So... I just yeah, thought it was good. funny that like France is really playing the game. Um, yeah, I did again, notice in the short, the, the short. Not only was Hanyu's um, triple axel landed on the toes, he was a little bit pitch forward. Mm -hmm. The quad toe triple toe combo, it was borderline under. It was like very like maybe in like an eighth to a sixth under, and it was getting close to that quarter, and it just looked like a little. Um, Honestly, exhaustion and a little like just. Yeah. And that's all. I, I wasn't concerned. I don't think anything's going on. I don't think anything's slipping. I just think it was fatigue. Although I still am always blown away that he's able to turn around and do that twizzle right out on that. So the fatigue, I think, comes in from not the fact of doing two competitions, because remember, a lot of these skaters do competitions all the time. The reason why they have fatigue here, which is why we often see skaters skip four continents when they're close to a nationals, is because. When you have to peak at a big competition, you give so much focus, emotion, energy there, and it takes so much the adrenaline that you don't have time to come down. They often skaters will often get sick after giving that much of yourself, and then coming back up, it would be really hard to get on an airplane and perhaps catch you know sickness or just the tired with the time change on top of it. Really yeah, the jet lag alone is ridiculous. And on top of that, everyone wants a piece of him. Every news article, every photo opportunity, every mm -hmm. sort of this. It's draining outside of the competition as well, I'm sure. And it happened four years ago. And I, yeah, four years ago when they, they had the Grand Prix final and he gave that amazing performance. And he had given that amazing performance at NHK before that. And then he had to go to Japanese Nationals and it wasn't as good after all of those records in a row. It's just that natural come down that happens. So honestly, Japan should change the schedule of their Nationals a little bit. Even though I love it over oh. Christmas, it just feels a little... But they have a lot of people that are often in the Grand Prix final. So it yeah. seems silly, you know. Especially every year that you get older, it gets harder and harder and harder. Or every right. more rotation. I mean, think about it for him. Other than showing that he can do a nationals and giving that, what is the purpose? He didn't give, he didn't do the quad lutz again. You know, he didn't do the triple axel, the triple axel sequence. So he didn't really have a chance to put out the harder content here. It just doesn't seem like it was. Unless they are truly floored and did not expect Shoma to pull it together as much as he did. And right, they thought but that for just, him, yeah. think about it. For him, he wants to test that content out before Worlds. Obviously, he's used to training and can do it and deliver it at the drop of a hat if he needs to but it just seems like it wasn't a great practice he didn't accomplish anything i mean he changed things in the short but for the free not really a great right. opportunity right like he didn't really have a chance to like test out the content test out the quad lots again just not really not useful to him right that's what i kind of yeah feel. yeah yeah so I thought it interesting that their team for Worlds, um, Hanyu, Shoma, and, and Keji. I mean, Keji was fourth here, 
And I have to say, the Federation really likes him because I saw no reason to send him. I think he's got, he doesn't have any star Well, quality. he was the most consistent between the two programs. Whatever, he was fourth and the other guy's yeah, But he was eligible. fourth and both instead of Who like cares? all the jostling. The well, if they're looking th for the guy a was, solid. The guy was third overall, Yuma. He has way more talent, way more upside potential. I mean, come on. Like, when I suppose with the top two, they're- Peggy they has been the third three. member of the Supremes for a long time. And it's like if right. we- we changed, uh, we changed her out. You don't even notice that the girl is different. It's like you're one of the background girls on Destiny's Child. Who cares? Honestly, Yuma has a lot more talent. He's going to, he's going to be going to Four Continents and to Jun and to Junior Worlds. But honestly, they should probably send him to the World Championships. They've been trying to make Keji happen for a long time. I think he's been a good soldier for Japan. But honestly, well, do they think it's better for Yuma to um, to? to have a chance at winning junior worlds honestly this is like who's politically favored we know that they like Kauri. we know that they like uh we know that they like keji but he's not yeah talented in that way he just doesn't have the x factor he's like the brady tonnell of japan's skating reliable but and they don't need him to help them get three spots so it to me i would develop right. the younger talent when we can i mean Send Shimono, even. yeah Think about who could I mean he someone could be injured in a year and miss out on a chance for big world level opportunity. And I have to say I really like Yuma skater Yuma skating and I liked it better at the Junior Grand Prix final too. I like him better than Shun Sato. To me, Shun Sato has no extension in his legs, and though he has great knee bend, and they both have great skating skills, but I think Yuma is a more complete skater. Just for me. I find Shun Sato to be a little bent-legged, a little max I mean, Even in the spins. air, he almost looks bow-legged in some of the air positions, and he's yeah. able to land them, but you, it, it creates a very cluttered look, mm -hmm. a chaotic look when he's in the air. Where Yuma has just like ease, his, there's an ease about it. Mm -hmm. It's soft ease, it's just kind of easy. Lacks kind of some presence for me. There's not really any projection or engagement facially. He's mm -hmm. always looking at the ice. He's kind of closed off, but that's just youth, I think. I think because he has this easy way about his skating, he could draw out more. But and what's going on with Koshiro? He's like 70% legs and 30% torso. I, do you notice that that's like a strange? And the blouse? And then exaggerated by that pink and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> because this is uh, Lombiel's other student. Yeah, here. I really think that we should, I like Mishigi, right? Like, I think he has a lot of talent, but I think that he is biting off a little bit more that he can chew. He should learn how to edit music together better, maybe, you know. And that Mulan Rouge edit is... And I think tough. that... A little tough. And I think he needs to start with some younger skaters. I mean, with the Ensu and the... I mean, come on. I think that he could have actually made the Worlds this year. I think we should send him to Lambiel, have him join, like, the School for Lost Boys, and he could work with Lambiel. They can. They all seem like friends. They can motivate each other, get Shoma in even a better mood, and maybe he'll fix that shoulder. And then right. have them all develop and push each other because he has a lot of talent. To me, I'm looking at who has the talent here. I'm looking at Yuma. I'm looking at um, Tomono. Zuki Tomono. I'm looking at Shoma. And then obviously Hanyu. Those, are, I think, are the four big... My inner Marta Caroli is betting on them, and I would use the other ones to kind of push the herd, but kind right. of... They're the first ones that I would kind of knock off when right. we, they're no longer useful. I mean, they're just kind of, it's kind of the way I see it with these men. Um, I think oh, you are right. correct. Tai Chi Honda, got, like the recessive genes of the family. He is like not as... He's, yeah, he's got, you mentioned him and then when I saw he was like 20th or something, I was like, you know, I'm going to let Dave just comment on it. I'm not going to watch this. It's fat, you know, when he was younger, he used to be more of a rival to Shoma. I think he's had injuries okay. and it just never bounced back. And But interesting to watch nonetheless. I was... Always. It was... Yeah, well, I'll get into it when we get into the ladies. Yeah. Well, let's get into and, the oh, ladies. Oh, let's talk about Daisuke, though. Oh, because, yes. Oh. Yeah, here's, here's my thing. Now... I don't understand the motivation for doing this because don't we either. know even when he came back and last year he did great and then didn't he, and he gave away his spot, which was so noble and amazing. I just wondered what the motivation was. But just seeing him in the opening moves of both programs, I was like, I am sorry. No one in skating today moves like that. 
No one there does. is like resistance in the air. There's like an amazing, beautiful tension in his arms. There's full body. It's just like no one else, nothing else. It's worth it, even though the jumps were, you know, understandably squirrely and all these sorts of things. But it's just, he is such a dancer at a time no one moves like that. And maybe no one ever has and no one ever really will because it's just so incredible. Well, Kolya Morozov brought it out during that Swan Lake program, okay? I'll tell you what, I mean, this is literally, I think, my favorite skater, my favorite male skater of all time. I, I just, no one can move like this. And, but I did think, will you get your ass out of this competition and go start doing that ice dance so I can see you at the Olympics, please? I mean, the I, okay, here's the thing. The girl's three centimeters shorter. I don't know. I think that, well, I think Tim Coletto, skating to Dream Girls, I think that they may have a little bit of something to worry about because he yeah. is so favored and we see how Japan certainly wheels and deals for Keji and Kaori, Sakamoto and Satoko. They protect their own. So I think that Daisuke... But if you can harness just a small portion of what even Takeshi was bringing to the ice here, here's the thing. team I want to watch. I think that... Obviously, he's been working on the ice dance, I would hope. Otherwise, why did he skate like this? I know he right. wanted to thank the audience, but I, I think an exhibition could have been very sufficient. That the, the short is a great show program. Maybe he could do a ballad, but I mean, come on. He could have come out with a special performance from Daisuke. Honestly, it to me, the whole thing that he was doing, a competitive program, knowing it's the end, but knowing he's not really retiring and moving to another discipline, it just seemed very disjointed. And he... I mean, missing triple loops. It was just very sloppy. And I thought, yeah. is this really thanking anyone with this performance? I was very right. confused. As right. confused as I am by the whole Honda family uh, coaching situation. The brother now isn't with Roth, but was with Daisuke's coach. I mean, it was all just very confusing. I was Correct. not sure what's going on. Marin Honda said that she's going to go to college for economics or something. And then, or she's going to go to like a real school. But then she said she wanted to be a flight attendant. And I was like, pause. I don't think you need a college degree for that. Although I yeah. think she can. Like, and I kind of feel like we were saying this last night. Don't you think that Marin Honda is one of those flight attendants that you would ask them for an extra Diet Coke and just never get it? I mean, that's correct. Kind of, I mean, if, if we're assuming that she applies the same work ethic to to her job that she has to her competitive oh. career thus far. Oh my God. Yes. I think, I think so. Uh, it was a little confusing. <laughs> God bless. You know, I love my daughter, but she, we need well, and it, it, that's why it becomes so frustrating. Cause even to just watch her take center ice, you're like, she still got it. Like she, you still know, she has a thing that no one else here does. She needed to but. trim her hair. We were talking about that the, the length of the ponytail is a little long and distracting. She had a way better music edit than Ashley ever did for La La Land. Um, but none know. of it matters, the hair nor the music, if she can't you get her what, house in order there. You know what it is? Is that she doesn't train hard enough that she kind of lacks muscular tension within her body and it becomes kind of flopsy mopsy and she doesn't move either program out you can even tell in the difference of the energy level from like last year at skate america to this year in the short program like she's really just not pushing those edges not pushing the choreography and it looks very haphazard and yeah and a half effort than what she's really capable of but i just think her heart is not in training and not in competition and maybe really hasn't been mm -hmm. for several years i mean that grand prix when we really expected her to take off flying she wasn't really that far off like at skate canada when she was fourth or whatever that would have been 2017 mm -hmm. and the 17 18 season during turn dot and stuff she had more of a fighting chance and then she let it kind of get farther and farther away but notice that the the mia hamada situation is very real notice that satoko was not with mia hamada at the boards here even though mia hamada was there for rika and both programs she was only with lee i mean they were very politically correct and trying to avoid scandal but this seems like it was a coaching change and not right. a collaboration um it seems like whatever is going on with her and nobunari oda is very real. There were reports about her taking someone by the ponytail and kind of like dragging them into the boards. I mean, like a very kind of serious accusations about her and weight. And I could kind of see uh, a personality like Marin Honda kind of being over it. It seems like Rika has that inner toughness. She would have been the least special of those three girls, right? Like she had the jumps, but didn't really have that X factor. And maybe she kind of thrived by trying to 
push herself forward and that's why you see her as successful but it seems like it was a strange environment well that's why like you wonder if like mar and honda needed a tougher presence in her life but obviously it sounds like the presence that was there was very tough so maybe the answer was she needed a tracy or a yuka or something like like that like i pushed vincent right out of the sport right like i mean he spent time there got a little bit of a shoulder and no one's heard of he's skating anymore so yeah yeah um just there seems to be i mean okay it's interesting as we talk about um, Sajiko's jumps. I mean, we've been doing this for years. Now there's a thing that's happening, and this was happening with a couple of skaters, so I just want to get your take on it. Often we know if people are leaning outside of the circle. They're tilting to the side. They can never figure this out. We know if someone lands too far forward on the toe or too back on the heel, we're going to have an issue. The thing that seemed to be consistently happening here with a lot of skaters is as they would take off, they almost never got upright and they stayed leaning forward, Mm -hmm. which to me is not something I have seen so often until now. I've seen them over pull or Mm -hmm. I've seen them tilt. You know, I'm used to sideways leaning, but this consistent like going up at an angle and then they never seem to be able to get up right in the air and then it was doomed and that was definitely happening to Satoko but it even happened to a couple of people here so you like are even, doomed if you're too far forward in the takeoff like that is like show, for instance I put Shoma's like quad flip like even that even though he was able to land it in the free it was still unusually tilted forward than I'm used to seeing from him he gets a little tilted in his yeah. sometimes on his takeoffs too um so that's a bad habit for sure. I mean, what what is what would you think is actually happening that it, you stay in that kind of tilted position on a takeoff? I just think that if you're too far forward on the takeoff, you're you're just too far forward on the on the front of the foot. Yeah, and, and then you, the whole it's thing more not the foot; change. it's the lean. It's the lean yeah. of your shoulders. It's the problem. Okay. So okay, yeah, because it was for her that was almost everything, and I thought for someone who struggles with getting height, there was no way. Well, I don't not knowing what they're working on with her, but they're obviously trying to make her jumps bigger, right? And they're obviously trying to engage the leg muscles more and build them and everything like that and off ice. And what I noticed with Satiko, you could kind of see that her whole rhythm is gone and the the consistency. And you see, you know, they really helped her in the short program with the jumps and with the marks that they gave her. And there was nothing that they could do in the free. Still a gorgeous program. However, I mean, really hard. I mean, honestly, if she doesn't pull it together at Worlds, I really don't see how her career can kind of be helped along by the Federation much longer and thinking that we're going to get a different result. Um, Right. She's not young. I think she's got a lot of beautiful skating to give, but maybe not competitively, right? Like, I think that she can... And I really, like, I'm getting quite serious that I think that there are enough skaters for, like, more of a pro circuit and more of a... Because there are so many talents with the way that the skating is going and if the skaters keep peaking at 16 years old and you have what like 14 more years 15 16 more years that these skaters have something to give where they're uh still quite capable athletically uh can still do jumps but maybe not do quad jumps i do think that a pro circuit and a competitive one could actually kind of be more interesting than the ones in the isu i mean think about how when sotnikova won that gold medal it was really like skating. And then we saw, even when she did that uh, program two years later after working with Albert Buch, she was such a more interesting skater and had so, many right. more, so much more refinement to her, even though she wasn't doing all the combinations. Well, more of a point of view. As the, I mean, that's the other yeah. thing. These are beautiful skaters, but at that age, you can only give so much based on life experience and worldview and all this sort of stuff. Everyone becomes uh, a greater artist as they continue, I, I mean, find. I mean, s- jumping is one part of skating. It is not yeah. all of skating. And I think that that is something that needs to be kind of checked, you know. Um, you know, someone was asking me if I was doing my acts again. I was like, bitch, I've been learning a rocker. Okay, like, let me tell you, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. Calm it. <laughs> With my twizzles and my edge class, and we're jumping, you know, it's all good. Anyway. <sighs> So, and she's going to Worlds. How do you feel about that choice? Well, I saw it coming because she was fourth and they were going to 
they were going to excuse it. I mean, they know how Japan is smart, how to know how to keep the big stars in the game for their own ratings, for their own interest. She's certainly been consistent. And she may years. still place higher with that PCS. I mean, she was second and fourth on the Grand Prix. They do need to think about their second behind Rika. Uh, it's a it's a questionable sort of thing. So they need to at least bank on her PCS or something. I mean, yeah, I, I think it was the right choice because Kauri was such a mess all really all season. And especially here, it was like the culmination. So... I know all these are these choreographers who are always like filming videos of working with the skaters and then they give bad performances and you're like, oh, oh, I forget that. Oh, yeah. yikes. Um, well, and I don't, I mean, this is when you do miss um, my Mihara mm -hmm. because that would have been someone who probably could have taken a world spot here also. I know. And then there were someone in, the, in our sea alive was like, well, Kauri really is missing my too much. That's why she's not skating well. And I'm like, let's, let's be real about this. She has not skated well all season. She, whatever is going on. Well, but my hasn't been training at all. Right. What, know, we're, like, Jonathan, this is the thing this is you her... talk about where they motivate each other to keep training. Kind of, but... Yes. But at the same point, she is at the very highest level. She was just so close to a bronze medal last year. And right. so capable. And uh, who knows what is fully going on with her. I mean, maybe she has injuries we don't know about, whatever. Um, but she got a real slow start over the summer. And I think Maya was still skating. Um, she didn't look the same in the shows. She certainly didn't look the same when we saw them working the triple axles of the camp. And I don't know if it's a stalled progression or what's happening. But I noticed that in the free to the matrix, though I think it's a good disguise for her lack of posture and the lack of stretch and artistry it didn't the short does that more successfully i think it didn't yeah it didn't force her to improve anything and i noticed it was right. looking very sloppy here and i don't know if it was just bad habits and she was out it of it looked condition. almost exhausted mm -hmm. like i don't know if it was untrained or if she's not well or something like it, she looked almost nauseous taking mm -hmm. center ice like even in that thing where they show the woman hit her back or whatever she was like kind of gone she was not in the moment and the beginning her balance was so high up her center of gravity was so hoisted and it was she was kind of wild and flailing into things and you just knew she wasn't honed yeah it was it, not that it was going to be really a, a splattery kind of performance and it re that program really did get like oof, brutally long and she was another one she really suffered from that ice coverage graphic yeah and she works with her choreographer so much on the improvement, but it just seems this year that it was so off. It just I don't know if the knees just have been going for her. I mean, that was definitely what was missing here. Like there was no knee in the takeoff, not in the skating. Like, and so I don't know if that just changed the whole thing. And then you just kind of bail. No, the you, Japanese you're... Federation yeah. is keeping her alive because remember, these skaters get ISU points, right? Based on going to competitions and their results. So by giving her four continents, she will likely still get enough points if she places well enough that it'll keep her in the game for, you know, good Grand Prix assignments. In case she makes year. this huge rebound over the summer. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if she were to skate well, because I still think she's extremely physically talented, mm -hmm. I think if she were, she's enough time before four continents to kind of get her act together. If she can do that, and really look good at Four Continents, I'm sorry, but I would say that Satoko has the flu and put Kauri to Worlds because they need... But it seems like a big if. It seems like a totally we'll have to see. Honestly, I would have like a Russian skate off between the two of them because yeah. I'm... Because you know, is very... Um, this was a, This was a fluke and I love this for her because... I don't I mean, know if it's a fluke. Think about people. it. She's been doing the triple axel lately. We know that she's been landing it. She's obviously had to get in very good shape to land a triple axel because you can't land a triple axel not being in great shape. And she obviously is but, probably I mean, feeling can't, better, more confident. Yet. I, well, you know, she could still go either way by world. We've been seeing the triple axels from her consistently, which to me is saying that she is feeling good about herself it really kind of coming over the hump. And to see the results here, I wasn't surprised after seeing the triple axel. I thought, okay, she's she's back. So I kind of, I would still go back I to mean, the Adele program. Well, I, I'm rooting for her. I mean, again, I like the short more than I like the free. Mm -hmm. um, but 
it's exciting. That girl jumps from her legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the leggiest jumper in all the land. And it's fun to see that kind of jumping again. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the free again showed that she's not necessarily an artist artist, but I'm excited by her comeback in a way. And I, I hope she continues to build on it again. I think the short program at skate America turned everything around mm -hmm. when she was like, Oh wait, people do like me and they will help me if I do well. I could still do this. She has a je ne sais quoi. There's an electricity to her and a power and a charisma that's, um, that comes out when she is performing uh, more than yeah. some of the others. Um, more than Rika. Let's be real right. about that. I agree. So, yeah. Rika here, it was good. She won. Um, I don't think either program is great. I just... Yeah. Well, and they were, they kept looking at the triple axel combo, I think, you know, and I know that she has the it was under. placeholder for, for the quad. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah. Again, we didn't see the quad. Uh, again, this, this, the, where the Japanese nationals is in the schedule, you know, it was fine. It was, you know, she's been dealing with an ankle injury and, you know, I think, it was, she did her job here. Um, the dress is hideously ugly. Um, again, call Carolina Herrera. I believe that you have like to walk a couple steps with someone who is, I am her right hand. So I think that you can really <laughs> um, grease the wheels there, Jonathan. Get to it. Get to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like more designers would do it if they ever reached out. Well, I think that you have a connection that you could help. Think about how much publicity Carolina would get in Japan. And around the world, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could all be wearing her pearls. And, That's oh. right. <laughs> but yeah, this whole uniting the religions of the world program, I, it's just too conceptual. I think Tom Dixon... Well, it's a pretty lofty task. I mean, and I don't get any of that coming through. But in general, I don't mind it. It has a cinematic musical build, which at least there's like a build volume-wise and intensity-wise in an almost um, cinematic sort of way. Uh, and I really do like the short program music because it's inf it's infusing her with some energy and interest that may not otherwise be there. For me, I, I know we had talked about this, like the free skate last year when I saw it in person. It looked a little like she was trying to do an elegant program that was just a bit beyond the grasp, you know, like the soft, the even walk of a bless her heart in the free skate. Like she looked like Tanya Harding a couple of times with her extension and like trying to do a thing, you know where that's why I appreciate the idea behind giving Kauri more aggressive programs. But like you're saying, it doesn't then force them to grow. It just masks in the interim. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. The Rika program is a little bit flat for me. I just think it's a bad, not, like a program that was not completely successful. I was noticing that when Tom did Sarah Kawahara's choreography to like the George Michael, he was like, the best, like she knew what to do with him. Sometimes I think that Tom gets a little conceptual, usually for women. I always prefer when he choreographs for a man. I don't know why that is. I have no idea, but certainly he's done great stuff for Jeremy Abbott and for mm -hmm. Ryan Yonke and for, you know, I remember like he did that great Eleanor Rigby program for um, Alex Johnson. And then he almost did this program that sounded like a Yanni music that they then ditched and went back to the Eleanor Rigby. Sometimes it just gets a little, well, do you think that's dependent on, like, I would think someone like Jeremy, a great skater like Alex, like, they probably have a lot of input and say while well, they're doing things. I don't think Alex picked the weird Yanni sounding music. No, 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 no. On. But I mean, like the Eleanor Rigby or something, or about the movement and identify it with a different way where is Rika maybe with the language barrier or whatever is happening or the way she came up under Mia Hamada, is she just going to say yes and do what she's given? So is she less a part of it or something? I mean, doesn't Tom seem like a little bit of a mad scientist to you? He's got like the, he's like a real intellectual. He's like hanging with you and Ludwig and, you know, Being Cizuron. artsy fartsy. Yeah, yeah like yeah, sometimes yeah. Okay. it needs editing for the mass okay. public. It needs okay. a Sandra to tone it down to her to be like, okay. <laughs> Tom, it's the really audience nice. needs to get something. <laughs> yeah. Tom, you know. Well, because as Sandra might ask, like, what is the takeaway from Rika's program? What is that left making the audience? What is the goal to she, give what to the audience? And, you know, there's a big ego there. So you have to be like, you know, you're very brilliant. And I just think the audience isn't as intelligent as you, Tom. 
And he would be like, oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah, that's true. Right? No. Okay. Me. But again, I mean, I don't think that any of what has failed her scoring-wise this season had anything to do with the program. But a great program can help. It can help. Yeah, it can help, but I think so could two Lutzes. Well, she's got an injury, so, I mean... Yeah, I, I, no, I mean, but I mean, that's what I mean. So I think there's probably an, uh, there's a limitation to it until she can just get the technical contact up. Yeah. As for Tomo, I, I don't really have a lot of thoughts on her skating. I didn't really have a lot of thoughts either. I mean, that um, it was like an unfortunate Tinkerbell looking skirt. I don't know what she was wearing in the, in the free skate. But something about her jumps, they were so unusual looking to me at times. She, she lacked some ride out on some. She would practically land at a standstill. And she would be doing them and they'd be nice in the air. But the landing sometimes were a little almost dry seeming to me. Um, some lovely qualities, but a bit generic, maybe. How, how and that's would, why we're both left being like, it was fine. How would Sandra say it? I feel she's a bright young talent brimming with potential and, and I'm excited to see how she develops. <laughs> and my teacher would say, what a functional talent. Because that's what it was. She did her job and I wasn't inspired by it, but she did it. You know, we're excited to see where this goes. Yeah, let's see how she develops artistically and with her presence in upcoming seasons. One yeah. to keep your eye out for. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Remember the name. <laughs> Remember the name. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a great moment for her. Yeah, I hope she had fun. She did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, back to some of those dick ones where he was like, you know, in other countries, she wouldn't even be in the top ten. But <laughs> oh my God. Jonathan, you just killed it, you know? Oh, I oh. ruined it. I ruined it. Okay. I ruined it. Okay. All right. Yeah, the ladies, they were, it was quite the moment. And I noticed that I couldn't even find the Tim Coletto, uh, you know, Dream Girls program. They don't even upload the other disciplines in Japan. For that when time. I was interesting, I was wondering how they work this, because again, we were watching everything after the fact. But when you have one pair team, I know. like when Shinamano used to compete as the one pair team back in whenever that was, uh, and still came in second. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they do um, that sometimes in the U.S. They have done And they're that. like, we didn't feel anyone was worthy of the title. Um, I'm curious if they just lump that in or if it's just its own closed event or how they might run that. If anyone was there live, let me know how that works. Because um, if you just have one pair, do you tack it at the end of the five dance teams or something? I don't know. I know. Like, what a joke. I'm sorry. But like what? I mean, and it happens. I mean, I would think it happens in some places. They just are only going to have one dance team or one pairs team or something like that. But that's what I like in that cluster of Eastern European countries when it's like Poland, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Hungary, that they all have like that joint nationals. I'm sure it's awful, though, because you have all of those self-important judges that want to give all of their opinions on the dance and they focus it on one couple. It must right. be horrific. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Totally. I mean, come on. Joe Inman, when people get upset about how opinionated he is, imagine nine of them. Okay. That's why you have nine of those people. In the most objective of disciplines. <laughs> yeah. Tricky. Tricky. Okay. But I will say this. Um even though there was up and down skating, watching Japanese nationals for me. <laughs> Such a joy. It, it was a joy. It took me back to the sport I like. Oh. Because sometimes, maybe in the female discipline right now, we've entered a sport that is not necessarily the sport I grew to love. Thank you, Law. The sport I respect and I admire, mm -hmm. right? I get it. I understand what's happening in ladies skating is impressive, but this felt like throwback and I just enjoyed it that much more as a result of it. Well, there was more skating going on. Yeah, kind of. There more was more knee bend, more turns, more edge, yeah. more Shoma Uno. More varying more, more styles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get it. So I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Even though I'll enjoy... It's more of a celebration of skating rather than a celebration of competition and drama, right? Like, there was more actual skating happen here. Dave, that's beautiful, and it... it mm -hmm. Other is just reducing it to track and field-like competitiveness. That's very cool to see these amazing feats that people can do, but 
uh, what I love most about it came really came through in several performances here. Yeah, because there's people have different opinions about this, right? I was asking Alex Arashev and he was talking. He's like, I care about how fast Usain Bolt runs. I don't care about how beautifully he does it. And I was like, well, we have a very different opinion. And I saw Gracie Gold's programs under you. And that makes perfect sense. Yes, you know? that's what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. People have different opinions about that. So that's the thing that's always been interesting about skating is it's pulling from like 8,000 different worlds. And it's that Venn diagram where they all meet is skating. Yes. And um, whereas I think maybe football, less so. Yeah. Yeah. No, do they go like, what a beautiful throw. Like, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I've said some high kicks. (laughs) You saw your high kick in the opera. Yes. He picked that field goal. Like, look at that extension. Good for him. Now, how about your friends in France? Okay, watching this performance. It was good. Well, I mean, it was fascinating when they panned out and you're like, there are people literally that looked like the Portland Mall where Tanya trained. There were more people on the public session yesterday than there were at French Nationals. I don't I don't yeah. understand how DDA is paying for that lawyer. I'm fascinated by that. Um, uh, it, it was, yeah, it was a great performance. They skated very well. Gabby, a little bit rough on the twizzles. Did you notice? Yeah. yeah. Um, but but you would never know it from reading the scores. Yeah, I but mean, that even happened internationally to them, and she knew it was a blessing when they got it. But it does bother me that she never turns her foot out; like it's always turned kind of down. Mm. Just like a little detail that I feel Tessa Virtue did better. Um, but it, yes, always the refinement, I believe. Yeah. But I do get you know some of those moments when she just like leans on him completely in the quasi like hydroblade moment of some sort. You just, um, you do feel like it's acting. Mm. Like, I do feel like they're giving you a full-blown, emotionally committed performance, if not as crisp. Do you remember when you watched the movie, like, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind or Garden State, and it was trying to be really deep, and at the end you were like, wow, that was just kind of depressing? (laughs) The takeaway is emptiness. (laughs) Or, like, the virgin suicides, and it ends, and you're like... That's kind of their free program for me. It's just kind of. Yeah, actually, in a way, if it if they had been able to end it with some like inspirational, like beautiful thing, it would have, to me, been much more powerful. It's easy to be sad, but it's just it's like the most them they could have been. And it was just I don't know what moves is Kevin Amos going to copy from this program because he copies their other program <laughs> and does it well, though. I mean, here's the thing about Kevin. Again, we talked about this, or I said this in one of the the recaps, that it's just the vocabulary of movement in general is so different than those of his his competitors. So you just like seeing it, and there is a commitment, and there is an energy. But man, does I do not trust those jumps. Even though he's consistently, more consistently delivering them, I feel it's a nail biter every time. Um, and if he could just ever get that solidified, I'd really love to get like behind this skating yeah but it still makes me a little nervous well he's getting jump advice from john zimmerman do you remember john zimmerman as a skater (laughs) well that's what you wonder you're like i wonder if they could get a nice jump specialist in for him because he clearly has the jumping talent you know what i mean um but he just gets a little mixed up in the air it seems sometimes yeah, where but, was Sylvia here? Maybe they were trading off with the kids or something. I'm not sure. but Yeah, because they seem to work well together. It seems more yes. um, of a connection that the well, two of them. Well, she's the real power behind the throne. She's yeah. the one that everyone says to fear. So well, and But they seem connected also, which I think that kind of stuff helps. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's interesting. I do, I do love his program. And you know what? He may. Let's see what happens. Europeans could be very interesting here. Oh, yes, yes. This, this could shake down in a way if, if the Russians get confused. Will Javi come from behind and win again? No, I don't think he's okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I don't, I don't you never know. So. You Andale, never know. Andale, Andale. Andale, Andale. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, lots going on. So I'm excited for Russian nationals, Jonathan. I don't know. I think it's going to be beautiful and dramatic and... If I'm being honest, though, like it could be just as fun and dramatic reading results only. No. No, you need to see it. Okay. Well, I would love to see Kiss and Cry drama, but like 
I think we know how everyone's going to gonna hear, skate. It's just how they're going to be scored. I'm sorry, but to hear the the acting and the passion of Tarasova and the, the, the phrasing and her performance is going to be up there with any of the ice dance event. I mean, come on. Yeah. Zdorova, Zdelina, all the <laughs> tears, the... Come on, it will be like Elena Rodinova skating to Titanic. I mean, there is just nothing better. <laughs> okay, it'll be about as classy as Elena skating, but it'll be as dramatic. But as she'll well. be skating with all heart of the ocean. It'll be all great. heart. Okay, in that <laughs> costume where it looked like the Little Mermaid. Who knew what was going on? Was right. she seaweed? Was she Ariel? Who knew? But okay. remember, the best nautical theme was that of Anna Pogorelia with the seashell bra when she was doing Pirates of the Caribbean. That was the one. A great talent. Okay, a memorable skater, as Dick would call Anna Pugarilea. Okay, mm -hmm. where has she been? I don't see her in the shows as much. I saw Cinderella on Ice with uh, Sotnikova, Yulia, and Rodinova. I was like, is Sotnikova Cinderella? Rodinova has to be one of the. She always had big feet to me. I'm like, she'd be great as one of the stepsisters with the big feet in the uh, cartoon, right? Do you remember that? I can't fit the crystal skate on her. Yeah. Yes, I was like, that is perfect. And what's going on with her hair? It's a little long and dark and messy. I was, I don't know. Elena is great. I think she is a such a personality. Love her. Love her. Okay. And Yulia, she doesn't look any sunnier than ever, but God, God bless, okay? Uh, well, maybe Anna could be like um, the fairy godmother who falls from the sky or something and just appears. Also, so it would be like a klutzy character. If anyone could ID those Russians, was that Maya Kromich in the back? Is she officially in the second row of a Terry? It looked very rank order of how much we It's your pyramid. Her. It's your pyramid, Dave. Yeah. Did anyone notice that? Who was that in the back? Was that one of like the younger ones? But Daria was all the way on the left, so she's still in the front row. But okay. I noticed that it was interesting. But on the periphery. On the periphery. Yeah, but okay. she's got beautiful hair and a look. Yes, so... I don't know. We need a microscope to see who some of those skaters in the back were. Who are you? I right, know. right. Zoom in, zoom who in. But also, um, I'm interested to see how Paris shakes down. I know, and still Bova withdrew. And apparently Nikolai Sorensen just had knee surgery. He might not be at the Canadian Nationals. Who knows what's Does going on? Does he need a nurse? I think he could. I think he could. <laughs> job. You're like um, Jenny's synchro team. Do you know that they're nurses with lipstick? I mean, they're... <laughs> But actually, it's dark and like Abby Lee, and it's like a nurse Jackie, and it's actually about nurses with addictive personalities or something. <laughs> um, I did not realize Stolbova had withdrawn. She but has. The partner that was is injured. The right choice. But Tatiana Anatolivna said that it was probably the end of her career, and then Stolbova unfollowed her on Instagram. But probably true. So. Well, we know that that's where they take to as a platform to unleash all their drama. And we love we, it. We, we're used to it on Twitter, but they're using Instagram for such. Oh, I love their Instagram. So operatic exchanges. Amazing. I mean, okay. aren't you into Marina Sayetseva? I mean, come on. That I'm, no, I'm into the singing Atiri sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we found out there was singing footage, I was like. Just I'm so you know. She blocked me on there, so I had to follow her on another account because some fan has to go ask me for her handle, and I stupidly replied to these fans that ask for too much information. And right. Protect thyself. I yeah. should have ignored. <laughs> I should have ignored them. Apparently, she has no sense of humor about herself. I wasn't even mocking Funny that. <laughs> Who would have expected that? Okay. I posted some very attractive photos of her that were from her account. So She's clearly, beautiful. she liked them. Yeah. Very beautiful. Maybe not natural, but very beautiful. And I think she's the closest to a Terry. She she takes pictures with a Terry. She kisses her ass on her birthday, February 24th. And she really helps us all moving forward, okay? Mm -hmm. She loves her me. niece, Diana. I'm sure they have a nice connection. It's great. Oh, my God. Wait until the next video. Jonathan. The plot thickens. Diana, who had level three hearing, says that she cured it herself because she just opened herself up more. Level three hearing, you need a hearing aid to, um, I mean, it's clearly a political thing and it is clearly from the adults in her that, life. Do, do they, you think it was a political thing to exaggerate the severity of her? No, hearing? they don't want or her to be, covering. They, were, they don't want her to be judged as someone that's disabled. They want to not curtail her potential. She was just last at the Grand Prix final. They want it to seem, they don't want her to be like the deaf girl, like the Eve Shalom. They want her to get the marks that a daughter of it's a Terry. Have, 
the interesting of how yeah yeah it's it's the opposite i think in the united states they would want to play that up because she becomes the girl with the hearing problem we're all rooting for they don't want her they don't want to be like oh see she can't really hear the music see she's not really that expressive that is what they're trying to do but i mean it's a ridiculous post and of course people have no they are like you're Beethoven into like a beethoven fit they're like, are you are you mocking a minor? I am not mocking a minor. I am talking about the ridiculous. Oh, we're talking about situation. the people around her in PR. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, oh my gosh! But you, I mean, I didn't even respond. There's no way to respond to some of these people on Twitter. You just have to like Correct. turn it off, turn off the screen. Yeah. Like, see what turn, it did for Shoma Uno. He turned off the video games and he won the he Japanese did. nationals. And then he had to just act very. Sh- Apparently, the press conference for. Um, the world team was very awkward. Hanyu was not very happy. Um, it was very short. Well, you know what it time. reminds me of? You remember when Chalk and Bates won Four Continents last year and you knew they weren't really allowed to be as excited as you wanted them to be able to be about winning, but because we all had to be weirded out by Hubble and Donahue's like, deduction. That's got to be so weird mm-hmm. to want to exude all of that celebratory joy and feel like it's you have to stay classy and rein it in. See, they should be like Tara Lipinski and just not care and just shriek and act. <laughs> See how much people loved her in America when she had genuine yeah, exactly. reactions. <laughs> Let it go, I guess. Yeah. So what was your moment here? My moment was oh, Shoma. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. I was thrilled for Shoma. But really, I'm just going to say just watching Daisuke do the opening 10 seconds of both programs for yeah. similar reasons. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed his choreographic sequence, his step sequence in both programs, those pleather pants shimmying back and forth. So Daisuke and Shoma, who seem like they are from the same school of skating. It just seems, That's right. That's right. It's like little Daisuke. So I think yeah. it's beautiful and we cannot wait to see him ice dance and having two ice dance teams. Maybe Japan will show it on their TV and we'll be able to see it on YouTube and all the best. I was excited about it. So hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys.